Hey friends, welcome back to the Maple Leaf Barn. I'm Libby and today I'm going to share with you all about my experiment growing hydroponic tulips for Valentine's Day. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thanks for hanging out with us on our flower farm here in Southwest Ohio. Okay, so first of all, I just wanted to reaffirm everyone that this is an experiment. It is by no means the way to do it necessarily and it's definitely not what everyone is saying to do i think this is just an idea that we had it's solving for a problem that we ran into and i thought i would just tell you all about it in case it might help you too one thing that i've really appreciated learning over the last few years a mistake or a failure is still actually a positive because you're learning from your mistakes, you're learning from your failures, and that's what experiments are all about, right? So we have to learn, and I'm the type of person to think there's gotta be more than one way of doing something. Drew and I were talking about doing hydroponic tulips for Valentine's Day, and honestly, I had no idea what a hype it was going to be this season on YouTube or on social media. I had no idea that people were going to be crazy about hydroponic tulips. I had no idea. And I just thought about this early in the summer last year. And I thought, you know, I've never tried to do anything for Valentine's Day. Why don't I just try it? So when I placed my tulip order, for the fall, for our normal tulips that would go outside, I just decided I'm gonna also place an order for pre-chilled tulips from Leo Verbe. That's where we get our tulips from. Well, the baby just woke up. I'll be right back when we're back. Okay, we'll see how long this lasts. We'll see if it works. If not, we'll just pick this back up when it's bedtime. So I had no idea the craze that was going to hit the internet and just flower farms in general about hydroponic tulips. But to be honest, I was planning on doing this this whole time. And so here we go. We are trying to find if there's an alternative to the traditional forcing trays that people use for tulips or amaryllis or whatever and if there's a way to do it with less manual labor access to the traditional forcing trays can be a little tricky to find they can be out of stock very fast there's not that many distributors that sell them and they're expensive um he agrees the traditional forcing trays are also pretty delicate and they're expensive to ship because they have to ship those traditional forcing trays in a black crate, like the ones behind me. Okay, Big Brother decided to come downstairs and play with the baby, so hopefully we can run through this and they will play happily uh, for a little while. For a small scale grower like me, I have limited amount of space and I have a limited amount of resources. So I really need to find a way to be able to use different things um, for many, many purposes throughout the farm. If we can find a, a different way of doing it, a different method of forcing tulips instead of those single use forcing trays, then that would be awesome because that means that we can use the trays for other things throughout the season and not just tulips or amaryllis or other forcing bulbs. And the last reason why we're trying to find out if this works is because we want to find a better system for time management. And if you have a busy life like me, you have kids and you're busy with church or you have other things happening, I don't have time to go and fill up a five gallon bucket and then bring it over here, dump all the other water out, put it new water and fertilize that water, make sure they all have the right amount of water. Um, and then days later, drain it all and make sure that they all get replenished and all this cycle of watering with hydroponic tulips. I don't have time to keep up with all of the different loads of water. And I thought, why, why wouldn't you work smarter, not harder? Um, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it the other way, but just 
curious if there might be an opportunity to set up pumps and pump everything. It'd be really ideal if I could figure out a way to just set up the watering system and then let it be for a few days or, you know, just make it more set and forget instead of like, oh no, did I do that? Those are some of the reasons why we're experimenting with this and let's move on to how we're doing it. Okay, so you see the fun, colorful trades here. I've never purchased anything from Bootstrap Farmer, but I've always thought about it. So I purchased four of their Bootstrap Farmer Grow Rack Flood Trays. Um, and that's, the, that's what we are putting all of the water in for all of the hydroponic circulation of the water that the tulips will grow in. So then the tulips are going to sit inside of the um, 10, 20 mesh deep extra strength trays is what they call it. This is the type of stuff that's more engineering related and less design and conceptual. So I will just read exactly what he wrote down for me to tell you that we bought. And then in the details of this uh, description of this video, I'll list everything that we got. So it's nice and neat. And if you want to go look at that, you can. Okay, so he says we got an air compressor and an air stone, and then all of the tubing related to it is all one half inch, and we got a submersible 550 gallons an hour pump. <laughs> so this is all how we can pump the water up into the tray, and I have it set at a certain level so that when I think the water is at the correct level where the roots are sitting, but the bulb is kind of out of the water, um, it starts to drain. And so I don't have to fill up the trays, the pump fills it up for me. Let's break down the timeline that we have started all of these things. So when we ordered our pre-chilled bulbs, I requested that they not be delivered until late December. I did have the flat row uh, trays by Johnny's, and so I kind of made this little weaving back and forth up and down in all the grooves of that tray, and I just layered it with damp uh, paper towels, and I just started lining the bulbs up in that, and to my disbelief, they started rooting within a couple of hours. That was at night. So when I checked back in the morning, they had already started to start rooting. And that was incredible to see. I I was really shocked. I don't think that's the method that I would take in the future, but it worked this time. So it probably would work it again if that's the route you wanted to take. I started rooting them either December 25th or 26th. I can't quite remember. And then let's just say three or four days later, we got the trays set up. So we moved all of them into the trays. Okay, well, so we just had them sitting in a tray like this because I thought their roots are going to start going through this mesh and into the water, right? The tulip roots will just find the water through the mesh. But essentially what I found is that the bulbs weren't elevated off of the mesh enough for them to really not get soaked by the water. So we started seeing rapid development on around January 1st and 2nd. And so I started wondering if we needed to separate the tulip bulbs from the water just a little bit um, and to increase stability because what I found is that Two of the varieties are really uniform and they looked really healthy and they are growing very uniformly across the board. The one that's bloomed, the bulbs don't look uniform and they're growing like crazy. So I again came to my husband, the master designer, woodworker, 3D printer, and I explain the situation. And without thinking about anything or researching any videos or anything like that, he first thought, well, these holes are pretty much the same size as co coffee stirs. Why wouldn't we just try to use coffee stirs to put it in here? And I'm not going to lie. I told him I don't think that's the best idea. Just I don't think it's super stable because 
tulips can get really heavy and I don't know that just seems like they would fall over so he thought of another idea he hopped on and designed a 3d print because he does have a 3d printer and I can link that one down below because I don't know the name of it so we did 3d print this and he created it himself uh, to fit the mesh squares perfectly so if you're interested in this we're happy to share that with you just as a freebie fun thing as we're on this growing journey together so be sure to check that out essentially what it does is it lines up with these and so he created it just to help it kind of sit just above the water line my idea was that the tulips would sit on top and the roots would go through the 3d print and then the mesh and then into the water as you might know 3d printers can take a while to print you would need about six of these per 10 20 tray so the bulbs that we were able to go ahead and get in this fast and very early on they did pretty well i was happy with how they were starting to develop because i could see that the roots were going through the 3d print and then through the mesh however the variety of tulip where the bulbs are looking a little off not doing so well is the variety that was last to be put in the trays it's also the single tulip variety and so it's coming up a lot faster and another thing to note is that the bulbs themselves looked really decayed and they didn't look that great when we open them up from the wholesaler. So I really think it just depends on the type of bulb and variety you have, how things go, if it's gonna be needing more structure or not. The ones that looked a little weird, they looked a little bit like they were affected by rot or some kind of a damage. They definitely needed the support and I didn't have the support ready for them yet. But the other two varieties that their bulbs looked really healthy, they are doing really well and they're taking longer and those are the doubles. So this variety that's blooming, I'm really shocked that it's already ready to go. I think it probably still needs like a little bit of time to really color up enough that I would want to put it in a bouquet, but it's looking like it's gonna be ready to harvest very soon and it's only January 15th. So we technically still have a month before Valentine's Day I know that they'll probably keep for about three or four weeks in the refrigerator, but I also am just going to put out to some of my clients, hey, does anyone want any pink tulip bouquets uh, just to get them in the hands of my clients and that'll make me feel really good. But as far as the other varieties that are taking a little bit longer to get going, I think those are going to definitely be ready for Valentine's Day. And what's nice about tulips is that they can store for a few weeks and that gives you a little bit of wiggle room. I definitely am excited about the progress we've had so far. We have had some issues with mold. We've had some issues with toppling over with stability, things like that, but I think it's going okay. I was pretty worried about some of those tulips that weren't really looking too good. So I actually pulled them out of the hydroponic tray and I put them in some soil because I've also never grown tulips in soil indoors. And as you can see, they have almost all bloomed. And so at least we know that they are alive and it worked. Uh, how well it worked, I will still be kind of deconstructing, but that is an option too if you feel like you start your hydroponics and it's not working you can always just pull them out and put them in soil because that's what i did and they kind of worked out <laughs> let's run through the watering and fertilizing process real quick as we wrap things up we'll be attaching all the tubing in order to flow the water to the top shelf first and then allow the gravity to bring the water down, filling up each level of tray as it goes. But for now, we just have this one tray set up and we needed to add something very temporary to prevent the water from shooting out. It's definitely not permanent, but it's a simple solution that we had around the house for the time being. We just slap some saran wrap on to prevent the water from spraying everywhere while it pumps up into the tray 
due to such a powerful pump at such a short distance. You know, if the distance was further, as in if it went all the way up to the top shelf, then it wouldn't have that problem. Every three days, I've been draining the water and filling the five-gallon bucket up with fresh water, then allowing the aerator to keep that water fresh continually. I've been adding the right amount of fertilizer to the water, which is explained on the product bag. This is what we've been using, but I'm sure there's a plethora of other options. I will link this one below. The tubing is set up just where I need the water line to be, and once the tray is filled to that level, it will drain any excess water so I don't overfill the tray. But I just turn off the pump usually once I've cycled out the water and the level stays the same. 